Nosferatu was directed by F.W. Murrow, and it stars Max Schreck, Greta Schroeder, and Gustav von Wangingham. Sorry if I absolutely butchered those names. And welcome to the third season of Hollow Screen. This season will mostly be focused on classic horror movies, like horror movies set before the year 1968, before the MPAA was established. There might be some outliers in there, but this season will mostly be focused on classics. And on the first episode, we are going to review the original vampire movie, and that is Nosferatu. Not only is Nosferatu the original vampire movie, it is one of the original horror movies. It set the blueprints for the horror genre. I first watched this film for the very first time at a really young age. It was the proper way of film screening with the piano player playing the soundtrack. Though I was too young to appreciate this film and I thought it was boring. I rewatched the movie when I was older and gained an appreciation for this film. Though I wish I've gotten to appreciate this film when I was younger. Man, I am truly jealous you got to experience this film on the big screen. I imagine the visuals just had to pop off the screen. Since this is a German expressionist film, the cinematography here is just on point. Shadows here are used excellently. In the most iconic shot of this film, we see Nosferatu creeping up the stairs, approaching our female protagonist, Ellen. The reason why this shot works so well is just because of how ominous Nosferatu appears in this shot. Like, he just looks like a freak of nature. Seeing him creep up the stairs in the most ominous way possible certainly just sends chills down my spine. I agree. This is a really cool shot. For some reason, some of the scariest moments in the horror genre take place on the staircase. The room. I wonder if this is the first used of this trope. My favorite part of all of Dracula adaptations is when he's sneaking into the castle. I actually think that this moment is portrayed the most effectively in this film. I'm not sure how true it is to Bram Stoker's original vision since I've never read his book, but I just think that the overall suspense and sense of dread that this scene creates is just unbeatable. The opening of this film is very slow, but it's done intentionally to create excitement for when Nosferatu comes on screen. When I finally saw Nosferatu for the first time, I got chills. God, I hate it when he does that. I know, right? Now let's talk about the makeup and costume design. Nosferatu's character design just sticks in your brain. It is that memorable. Once you see it, you'll never forget it. It's kind of hard to explain why his physical appearance is so creepy. But I think it's his forehead, and it brings out his elf-like ears. And his fingernails just look so inhuman and unnatural. Usually vampires look more human, but seeing a vampire look so inhuman is certainly a breath of fresh air. I also love Max Shrek's physical performance and how soulless and robotic it looks. This isn't me criticizing his performance, saying that he's like wooden or something. It's actually a praise to show how he's able to, with just his physical acting, to portray how Nosferatu is just so inhuman and monstrous. I love the scene where Jonathan Hutter, remember him? discovers Nosferatu's casket, and his reaction to discovering that he's a vampire, his face is just priceless. Jonathan has no idea what is what he's going to do, and is completely helpless. My favorite shot in this film is where Jonathan is creeping up to Nosferatu's uh, casket, and he kind of looks inside, and we get a POV shot of Nosferatu's face, but only like a small sliver of light is hitting it. I don't know why, but this shot is just so damn creepy. A big issue that I have with a lot of vampires is that the human characters already know the weakness of the vampire and defeat them with 
ease. The human characters have no idea what is happening to Nosferatu's victims, and they and they become convinced that it's the plague or something. What makes this aspect really interesting is that when this film came out in 1922, the world was still dealing with the Spanish flu pandemic. And the fear and paranoia that people were feeling at that time is captured really well here. Living through the COVID-19 pandemic, these scenes feel so much more relevant a hundred years later. So we've been singing the praises of this film but we do have some issues with the film. The main issue that I have with this film is that the human characters are significantly less interesting than Nosferatu. The scene with only the humans really drags this for me. This is kind of a problem I have with all the Dracula adaptations I have seen, is that the human characters are just kind of boring to me. Like, they don't feel like real people to me. They honestly just feel like plot devices, you know, to just drag the plot forward. Scenes that just focus on the human characters really drag for me. The pacing really drags to a halt when it's just the human characters. Though I find the public reactions to Nosferatu's carnage really interesting. They see all the death and carnage happening, and they think it's just a new strand of some kind of plague. This is clearly their way to comprehend the incomprehensible. And I find this aspect really interesting, as said earlier. But when it comes to the core characters, there really isn't that much to be desired. Also, to state the obvious, it's a silent film, and it's tough to watch with a modern audience. Some may find this film boring, just as 10-year-old me. But all jokes aside, silent films are an acquired taste. As a film buff, this is kind of blasphemous to say, but... I usually struggle to connect with silent films. Like, as a member of the modern audience, dialogue is one of the most important aspects to find myself to get connected with a film's narrative. And without that, I just really struggle to connect with a lot of silent films. But there are those rare silent films that still manage to grab my attention based on their visuals and physical performances by the actors. And Nosferatu is actually one of those films. I do have to admit, the first, the first act kind of drags for me, but it quickly grabs my interest. And by the end, I was hooked. Too. So final grades, I have to give it an A-. minus because of how it still manages to get under my skin and keep me interested despite this film being a hundred years old. Even though Nosferatu has kind of thin human characters and the pacing can get a little slow for me, I think that this film must be respected as one of the great pioneers of not only the horror movie genre, but cinema in general. And I think all those negative things should be ignored in celebration of this great achievement in cinematic history. I'm going to give Nosferatu the same grade, which is an A-. So since this film is in the public domain, there is a version of this film that has the band Typo Negative that played their part of the soundtrack to this film. I feel kind of mixed here. In my personal opinion, the classical music is always superior, and hearing modern music in a silent film just feels kind of strange to me. But what's your opinion, Ant Hill? I agree that classical music will always be superior when it comes to silent films, but as a fan of Typo Negative, I am so happy that this exists. Hearing Prelude to Agony come on while Nosferatu enters the scene is just a treat. First things first, I would like to thank the great Unique Frequency for joining me in a review of Nosferatu. Though, tune in next time to where we review one of the worst horror sequels of all time. Though, anyways, I hope you enjoyed our review of Nosferatu. And if you did, make sure to give this video a like. 
And if you want more content like this, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell notification so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And shout out to Minecraft Pillagers and Gillian Jacobs. Thanks for watching.